Good evening and welcome to Inner West Council's online community session. My name is Annie Colford and I'm the engagement coordinator here at Inner West Council. We're just going to wait a few minutes while people join us online. Uh, we'll get started uh, probably at about four, four minutes past six. Good evening and welcome to Inner West Council's online community session. My name is Annie Colford and I'm the engagement coordinator here at Inner West Council. Before we start, I'd like to acknowledge the Gadigal and Wongal people of the Eora Nation, who are the traditional custodians of this land. I'd also like to pay my respects to Aboriginal elders, past and present, and acknowledge their young people who will be our future leaders. So tonight we're online to view a presentation on the development of the new cycling strategy 
and action plan here at Inner West Council. Our senior transport planner, Bridget Kelly, is here to explain why are we developing this strategy? What are our constraints? What is safe cycling infrastructure? And what you can influence? Then it's over to you for your comments and questions. Finally, we'll explain what's next for the strategy development and how you can keep updated with the project. Now, just a few housekeeping notes about tonight's online session. This session is anticipated to run to around 7.30 this evening. And closed captions are available in English and five community languages. To use that function, please click the CC button at the bottom right hand corner of your screen to turn it on and the settings button beside the CC to change the language. After the presentation, we'll be inviting you to submit written comments and questions using the Q&A tool. You'll see the icon in the top right of your screen to turn it on. Just it has a little question mark in it and it says Q&A. Uh, please add your name to your written question. As attendees, you will not be using your microphones and cameras this evening in this meeting. And please note all submitted questions and comments will be moderated. Uh, finally, a note about privacy. We are recording this meeting and it will be available in a few days time on the Your Say in a West website so that other people can view it. If your comment or question is broadcast and your name is included, this will be visible to the live online audience now as well as future viewers of the recording. By providing your name in this online meeting, you consent to your name being visible too. So now, uh, without further ado, I'm going to pass over to my colleague, Bridget Kelly, who is our senior transport planner to uh, present uh, to our online session this evening. Hi, um, so I'm Bridget Kelly, as Annie said, and thank you for coming along this evening. Uh, my presentation will uh, start and finish with this slide, which is asking you to um, make formal comments, I suppose. Um, there's a few ways to do this. You can visit the Your Say in a West website and uh, complete the online surveys or place a pin on the map. We're about to address our specific geographical locations. You can put pen to paper and write to the PO box, or you can email me directly by this email address, which is on the Your Say in a West website. Uh, the closing date is Monday the 11th of April. Um, uh, if I was to receive them that subsequent week, it's not a problem, but please get them in by early April. It is most influential if you could uh, engage with one of those methods. The, the comments you make this evening, the questions you ask this evening will inform the strategy. Um, participating via the Your Say in a West website is one of the best things we can do to influence this process. Um, so the, the function of my, of my presentation this evening is to run through the Inner West Cycling Strategy and its aims as well as its structure. And one of its primary aims is providing a bike network to, see, to suit all types of bike riders. And this is a, this is a wide range of people. Um, you know, if we start with the picture on the left, it's not just children uh, riding with parents and carers, it's also uh, children, young adults riding independently. Um, older people, uh, bike riding can, can be lower impact than walking and can be really good for older people, as well as novice riders who are still learning to balance and are, are still learning to ride. Um, experienced adults tends to represent people who are comfortable on a bike, uh, but these people still experience the navigational confusions as well as traffic fears and stress. And the picture on the right represents um, fitness and commuter riders. Sometimes we hear them described as the bold and the fearless. They're often long-term confident riders and especially confident cycling in and, in and with traffic. 
Um, so the purpose of this slide is really just to talk about what is safe cycling infrastructure because it can it can be delivered in a in a range of different ways. Those five principles across the top are broadly accepted as the important principles of a, of a bike network. Safe, uh, safe from traffic uh, fears and stress, uh, feeling safe and being safe, connected, so people don't have to magically levitate over these over these gaps. Uh, direct, uh, like any other mode, people riding a bike want to be able to get where they're going as directly as possible. Uh, attractive can can range from landscaping to to maintenance and cleaning. It's just as important for for cycling infrastructure as it is for roads and footpaths and parks. And comfortable, uh, the primary primary component there is probably uh, comfort from traffic fears and stress, but also uh, comfort from from heat with shade as well as hills. Um, so the pictures here represent the, the sort of three primary infrastructure types. The picture on the left shows what's known as a quiet way uh, or, or a mixed traffic street, uh, a street with low volumes, low speeds of car traffic, and then we can make various interventions to make it safer. Um, uh, in such as shown here, a pinch point with landscaping, which improves attractiveness. Uh, various traffic calming devices to make it safer. Um, the picture in the middle represents uh, set what we call separated cycleways or traffic protected bike lanes. Um, they're, they're obviously the safest and best outcome of any of any cycling uh, bike network. Um, what's shown here is a two way bike lane or cycleway and you can also get one way or unidirectional it's also called where like cars bike riders travel on the opposite on the each side of the road on the left hand side the pictures to the right represent uh, shared paths shared paths in in parks and alongside canals such as that's uh, king george park sh uh, shown there and um uh, or roadside shared paths, uh, that's um, Iron Cove Bridge. Uh, shared paths are a, are a necessity in, in this tight urban area. As well as these um, sort of primary infrastructure types, there's also uh, operational methods which can be used to make uh, uh, cycling safer. And that's basically um, an intersection, a street, a whole area, it could be a suburb or part of a suburb, uh, where operations are altered to improve cycling safety. It could be turns at intersections, uh, one-way streets, access through one-way streets for bicycles, uh, traffic filters or diversions. It's basically how a, a traffic in an area, a street or intersection operates uh, as opposed to a physical installation such as a, a cycleway or quiet way. Um, there are a number of constraints we face in the inner west and it's important to be aware of these um, as the strategy takes shape. The first one we have discussed, which was that we're uh, catering for a, a wide range of users from children to the, to the bold and fearless. Um, in the inner west, we're dealing with a condensed and historical urban area. We don't have the space of uh, regional regional towns and cities or outer suburban areas, greenfield sites. We're, we're very condensed here. It inevitably means we uh, end up sharing space a lot of the time. Um, we have a large population, both residents and workers. The inner west is considered both um, high and medium density. Um, it varies right across the, the inner west. And most significantly, it's growing. Uh, the area is expected to forecast a significant uh, growth in both um, workers and residents over the coming two decades. And we're, we're very much aiming to cater for, for this growth as well as existing residents and workers. Um, another point to remember is that uh, people use our streets in different ways, both individuals and businesses use our streets in a range of different ways and this necessarily means um, sharing space. Uh, people traveling, whether they're walking or cycling, they might be using wheelchairs and scooters and skateboards, they might be behind the wheel of a, 
a small car, the handlebars of a motorbike or the wheel of an enormous double trailer truck. And they all use our, our streets in, in a different way. Um, one of the real challenges in the inner west is what, what I, I call squeeze points. And that's where all of those many users are, are converging into a narrow point to cross perhaps a rail line or a canal. There's a whole, there's, a, there's not many examples throughout the LGA. Um, uh, Bedwin Bridge Road and Gleeson Street at Sydenham, um, West Street at uh, Petersham, uh, Davis Street at uh, Dulwich Hill. There's a whole range of squeeze points where everyone converges, no matter how we're traveling. And uh, it's not cheap to provide extra space. So it's about those range of mechanisms we can use to deal with those squeeze points. Um, and a special challenge and quite unique to, to the Inner West is there's a lot of through movements in the area. Um, inner West is uniquely placed with uh, real destinations on each side. Uh, the, the beaches, uh, the city of Sydney and uh, high entertainment and employment areas on the east as well as the airport and ports, and then Western Sydney and New South Wales um, to the west, and people are moving constantly between these points, and the inner west is right in the middle. So we need to do, remember that the, we're dealing with these through, through travellers constantly, uh, day and night. Um, so I'd like to run now just through the broad structure intended for the draft cycling strategy. Um, now, this is a, basically where we identify a number of strategic priorities and each priority has a number of actions listed beneath them. This approach is taken with strategies which are already, which are existing in the Inner West Council, already adopted. And the two examples shown here are examples used by other councils. Um, so it's a, a broadly accepted approach for, for a strategy. Um, the example on the left is Northern Beaches, I think they call it a bike plan. So they've tended to call their priorities goals and directions. Um, and you can see there are a number of actions to, to um, achieve those directions and goals. The example on the right is the City of Sydney, where they've identified a prior priority and listed a number of targeted actions to achieve those priorities. Uh, so the main point of this slide is just to, to broadly outline uh, the structure of the strategy and the, um, the, the comments we're seeking from you, especially on your say in a West. Um, what you'll see on your say in a West is uh, the proposed cycling priorities in the draft strategy. They're listed here, one to five, and I'll quickly run through them. And you'll see basically two questions on your say in a West. One is asking you to comment on these five strategies. And then the next question is asking, how can we achieve these strategies? And that's where you might like to make any number of suggestions about actions which could be listed beneath these priorities to address them. And also feel free to make, make comments on the proposed cycling priorities. And I'll just run through them quickly. So uh, point one is connect the bike network to make bike riding low stress and convenient and increase the number of people riding a bike. Number two is take an organisation wide approach to ensure cycling is embedded in all aspects of council's planning and functions. Now this is referring to all functions uh, from the fine details, like those, those frustrating one inch, one inch gap, one inch lifts on, on a driveway to uh, preparing an LEP and DCP, which are planning instruments. So all aspects of council's planning and functions. Uh, point three is delivering a safer bike network will take time. So in the meantime, we need to take action to improve safety on popular routes and locations which are currently used by people riding a bike. And in many occasions, uh, uh, occasions they've been used for long periods of time. 
some uh, road crossings really spring to mind. Uh, Old Canterbury Road at uh, Yo Park, moving between Dulwich Hill and Ashfield. It's an incredible challenge to, to cross there. Uh, Sydenham Road, um, it, down towards the station, unless there's signals, it's, it's a real challenge. Um, and points of Johnston Street uh, in Annandale, unless there are traffic signals, it's a big wide road and it, it's a real challenge to get across. And that, that priority three is about working on some of those, some of those problem areas immediately. Um, point four is to support people to ride a bicycle, both existing riders and new riders. And this tends to refer to uh, non-infrastructure, um, non-infrastructure uh, initiatives like uh, education and information uh, for, for, you know, maybe driver education, uh, certainly helping people to, to jump on a bike to understand the things they need to stay safe, like lights and lights and bells. So that tends to be non-infrastructure initiatives point four. And uh, point five uh, is working with other councils, the state and federal government, its bike groups and the community to learn, share and facilitate change. And this is ongoing work. A lot of it happens, happens now, um, but it's obviously about identifying things that can really help us, help us target that, um, that priority. Um, so as it says there, please uh, log on to your Say Inner West and, and make make your comments on both the priorities and the actions. The draft cycling strategy is a completely open document and I really want to hear from you. So, so anything you have to say, I'd really like to hear. Um, so um, I'm finishing now with my opening slide, which is to please make, um, to, to log on to your say in a West or put pen to paper or contact me via email. Um, comments this evening are, are noted and recorded, as Annie said. Um, one of the most influential things I can do is say I received, you know, 400 comments saying this, and um, it, it's helpful both now and into the future. And if you could use one of those mechanisms to do it, that would be helpful. Uh, the closing date formally on your say in a West is Monday, the 11th of April, which is the, the start of school holidays. And as I said, I'll accept comments until uh, right through that week. Um, I need to, to get moving on them in, in the end of April. So uh, that's the end of my presentation. Um, and Annie now will uh, just help us navigate any comments and questions we're receiving. So I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks, Bridget. Thanks for the presentation. Um, as you say, uh, we're now inviting all uh, attendees this evening to uh, put written comments or questions or comments and questions using the Q&A tool at the top of your screen. Uh, and as Bridget said, all comments and questions will be transcribed from this evening and used to inform the draft cycling strategy. They'll also be included in an engagement outcome report, which is a report of everything that Bridget and her team have done to uh, develop the strategy so far. It's a great document that really explains how uh, Council's decision making is informed by the community's input. And I, I, I believe that Bridget has been working on putting this strategy and action plan together for many months now, working with um, specific stakeholder groups, working with uh, other government agencies to get to the point where we are now. Um, so the engagement outcome report will go on to our Your Say in a West site, so you'll be able to see how your how your comments are, uh, are in there. Um, and then what will happen is that the engagement outcome report and the first draft plan and uh, action plan and strategy will be presented to council uh, before it goes on public exhibition and council will look at it and then it will be uh, hopefully endorsed for public exhibition. And the public exhibition is an opportunity for you to have your final say. 
So this is not the final say, this is an interim say that we're having at the moment, uh, but the final say is at the public exhibition uh, and that's the, the opportunity really to say, have we got it right? Did we did we hear correctly what you said during this development phase? So um, I'm looking at, uh, we've got some comments uh, and questions now, so I'm just going to get started. So the first one is from Mark, which is a question about what is the budget? Uh, what's the budget for the strategy and action plan if, if you're able to address that? Bridget? Uh, look, the budget is, is still remains to be determined. Um, one of the best things to get budget allocated to cycling infrastructure is a voice from the community in all wards. So uh, whilst I can't provide you with a with a clear dollar figure right now, one of one of the things which can influence it enormously is your councillors and uh, uh, staff at council, not just myself, especially councillors, hearing from you uh, with, a, with, with a request for safer cycling infrastructure. Um, the, we live in a democracy and if you, if you put up a loud voice, uh, money will be will be allocated accordingly. So I'm sorry I can't give you a specific dollar figure there. And the best thing I can say is not only with the strategy, but certainly once um, uh, once infrastructure is proposed, make sure your your councillors are hear, hearing from you about the importance as well as the importance of good quality cycling infrastructure. Thank you. Uh, the next question is. Um, what measures can council take to address driver awareness of cyclists? Uh, what kind of other other um, ways are there to address that? Possibly something more than signage. Yeah, um, it, it's a good question. Um, there, there's a number of things council can do, and the first thing I'd like to to talk about is a fabulous video done by Northern Beaches Council. It's uh, just over a minute long and they're distributing it via um, social media. People have seen glimpses on the back of buses. So, you know, there's a there's a range of mechanisms councils can use to, to help drivers uh, understand what's important about from a bike rider's perspective. Um, something that's extremely important is for drivers to experience driving around bike riders. So one of the best things we can do is help people get out there on a bike, provide um, circumstances where people feel safe and are safe when, when they're riding, because there's a principle of safety in numbers and there's also um, the experience that drivers will have of, of, of driving around people on a bicycle, it, it helps them get better at it. Um, so there, there's no shortage of things that um, it can be done to help drivers. And what I'd encourage you to do is be making comments on your say in a West for anything that you think uh, in a West Council could do. Uh, it is uh, something we ask the New South Wales government to play a big role in as well. But if there's something especially you can think of that local government can can do, then then by all means, please include it in the in comments in your say in a West. Thanks for that. So uh, next question is, how does council work with state agency uh, state agencies such as Metro to take advantage of rail corridors for cycling infrastructure? Yeah, uh, there is um, a policy in place for this. Um, uh, that is a, a New South Wales government policy. Um, and one of the most influential things we can do is obviously be, be working in accordance with the policy. And um, Inner West Council uh, it works, works as, a, as a stakeholder with, uh, you know, the motorway delivery agencies and the and the mass transport delivery agencies. Um, and it, whilst we can advocate as a stakeholder, it is extremely important that the, uh, these agencies are also hearing from members of the community. 
Um, it is common for people to think that uh, councils, you know, West Council has a more significant voice in these circumstances. Um, very often we are a stakeholder like everyone else and one of the best things we can do is have a very loud voice together. So uh, if, you're, if you're seeing opportunities there, um, please, please not only let council know, but be mentioning, mentioning to the agencies. And you will see an action in the draft strategy um, which addresses this point and references that, that New South Wales government policy, um, policy I mentioned earlier. Uh, but basically, I'd really be encouraging all of us to, to lobby these agencies for providing this infrastructure. That, that question um, moves uh, into uh, the next question from Sarah, which is how does Inner West, Inner West cycling policies and plans fit with state government development projects? So specifically, uh, this attendee is wondering about, say, the West Connects development, Sydney Metro Station, the White Bay Power Station redevelopment. Yeah, um, look, we one of the most influential ways we can uh, we can work with agencies here, interestingly, is to unite the teams uh, within government agencies. It is um, these are enormous agencies, um, thousands of people, where people may be working to deliver a motorway on one side and deliver a, a bicycle network on the other side, as well as a whole range of other uh, teams achieving other things. And very often one of the best things uh, we can do in the transport team, and we're doing it every, every week, is uh, to work between the teams, often to share this information between the teams. Um, it has occurred this week where uh, we met with a team with a very specific objective on Monday. Uh, they explained what they could not do. We met with another team later in the week, week who said they're certainly open to it. And it was a good understanding of why we heard a conflicting comment early in, in the week. Um, so one of the most influential things that Inner West Council or any council can do is sometimes um, to work with our colleagues at Transport for New South Wales or, the, or in the state government to, to help them navigate their, their own internal organisations. These are large organisations like uh, Inner West Council uh, achieving or working towards many different outcomes. And, um, you know, it's not always possible to know what everyone's doing. And it's one of the one of the most useful roles we can play in terms of uh, working with the with the New South Wales government. Thanks for that. Uh, the the next uh, question is from from Mark. We've got quite a few uh, from Mark, so we're just we're just going to go through them one by one. Uh, when the strategy uh, goes on public exhibition. Oh, oh, I think I think maybe the question is when it goes public, the public will complain if parking spaces are lost. And certainly from my experience uh, working in engagement, there is that uh, that challenge in the in the community of uh, we, spaces such at a premium within the inner west that uh, sometimes parking spaces uh, Either are lost or they're moved elsewhere around the around the corner when a, when cycling infrastructure is put in and that and there has to be that balance. What what's the sort of current thinking about that that about trying to create that balance, Bridget? Uh, look, uh, that was one of the constraints I mentioned, where um, a range of people use our streets in a range of different ways. Obviously, car parking is is one of those. There uh, is a large degree of um, assumption around what how our streets uh, should be used. The strategy won't specifically address car parking simply because um, the circumstances we'll be dealing with in each project and each street are so unique um, that the, the strategy won't necessarily specifically reference car parking. What I'd encourage you to do, as well as the, the community once a, once a project is, or, or cycling initiative of any kind is, 
uh, raised, exhibited or proposed is to be contacting your counsellors. What's extremely important is that counsellors are hearing from people who want to see this infrastructure because um, it, it isn't uncommon that it can be altered or even overturned in response to people who have become very used to um, the existing circumstances and are perhaps resistant uh, to small change. And I'd encourage you to be as, as um, uh, vocal as possible in contacting your counsellors to show what what you'd like to see. Um, that I'm sorry, that's the best I could offer you at this stage, which is just make sure counsellors are hearing from people who support the initiatives and not just people who oppose uh, parking impacts. Great, great advice there. Uh, next question, uh, are you looking at any mechanisms by which council can lower the speed limit? Yes, um, the uh, integrated transport strategy, the inner west integrated transport strategy, it's called Going Places. Um, it identifies uh, 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 inner west wide speed limit of 40 kilometres an hour and this work has recently kicked off. Um, the transport team has engaged a consultant to do the necessary background work to implement that slower um, high pedestrian area speed limit right across the inner west. Um, work in at state government level is chipping away at, um, uh, at 30 kilometres an hour becoming the standard for high pedestrian areas. Um, and hopefully uh, we could work towards that as well or eventually. Uh, that work though, identified in the integrated transport strategy is uh, significantly underway and recognised as a very, a very important component of, of delivering a safer bike network. Thanks for that. Um, next uh, question is, Will the strategy consider complete streets designs? Is the scope for pedestrianisation and cycling lanes to replace identified streets? Uh, there is scope for everything. The nature of the strategy with the structure I mentioned, which is a series of priorities and actions, um, will allow, allow any mechanism to be used. And, um, the important, the, the important component of the strategy is that uh, they, the initiatives are viewed through those lenses, uh, those uh, five principles of safe, comfortable, direct, attractive. Um, so complete streets and complete streets is, um, is one, one concept which is uh, applied differently throughout the world. Uh, complete streets is by all means something which which could be applied and would be great to see in some of those those high pedestrian areas. Thanks. Now the next question is, uh, it's a question about the acknowledgement uh, in the in the strategy that that it that it is a slow process to build cycle cycling in, infrastructure. Um, so that this um, this person is asking, should the priority be to build the network as fast as possible uh, rather than to acknowledge that it that it is hard and to have some interim uh, activities first? Uh, certainly a good point, and I'd encourage you to to make some comments on your say in a West to that effect. Um, uh, yeah, and uh, I suppose the the question is what what can be done in the meantime. Um, that that uh, priority, I think it was priority three, was basically looking to address some immediate issues for existing bike riders, um, and it's not necessarily about uh, delaying a, a safer bike network. It is just about identifying areas which are known problems at the moment. Um, you know, the crossing of Albion Street at Johnston Street is a good example. It's used by uh, many food and grocery deliverers who we all rely on each week, 
as well as people writing where they need to go. And it's about could we potentially place in a, 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 a crossing refuge so those people doing that uh, doing that route and now uh, have have that one one point where stress is a little lower. Um, I would encourage you though to to certainly put that down in your feedback on your say in a west, um, simply because these priorities are are completely fluid in response to what we hear from the community over the over the next few weeks. Next question uh, is from Sam A. What can we do to support council in helping shift the state government's priorities regarding cycling? Uh, the is certainly appealing to your state MP and the minister by all means. Um, the state government uh, is extremely responsive uh, to walking and cycling now. Uh, they have um, strategic documents, uh, the Future Transport Strategy 2056, as well as a number of planning documents, the Greater Sydney Regional Plan and the Eastern District Plan. And uh, these recognise the important and necessary role of walking and cycling in a in a growing city. Um, I'd fully support you to be approaching uh, the minister, both transport, roads and active transport, as well as your own MPs to let them know um, how how consider how important you consider this. Um, and if you take a look at some of those documents, uh, the future transport strategy 2056 as well as the planning documents, the Greater Sydney Regional Plan and the Eastern District Plan, you will be able to quote them that their strategies say, say uh, these things, such as uh, walking to school and uh, local facilities is recognised as very important, as is cycling um, for uh, public transport, short trips and more regional trips. And I'd encourage you, encourage you to not just have a look at the documents, but be reaching out to your MPs and your ministers. OK, we've still got a, a few questions uh, on the board, so I'm um, moving through them now. For, um, next one is from Jules. Um, in priority two, are you planning on having a team or a department within Inner West Council dedicated to active transport? Uh, I'm not sure I can answer that with confidence right now. Um, you know, this will remain to be seen. Obviously, there's a range of resourcing issues. Um, the best thing I can suggest at this stage is make, uh, please make comments on your say in a West, uh, suggesting that as an action. Um, because obviously there is a range of resourcing and uh, budgeting issues that you know, any council navigates. Um, and I'm sorry, I can't give you a very clear answer. The best thing I can say is if we get a, a strong community request for this, it has great influence. So I would fully encouraging, encourage you to be making that comment on your say in OS. Next question uh, is from Sarah. Sarah says, is there information on the value of secure bike parking for local cyclists that uh, that is not on their property? For example, she lives in a street with very little off street parking. Uh, uh, bikes are on the verandas and the verandas are small and sometimes they're right up um, on on the street or up steps or um, the, the door is right on the street. That makes bike ownership and use really hard for lots of residents. Uh, community bike parking that was not exposed to the elements could be uh, a fantastic solution. What, what's happening in that space? Uh, yeah, I love, I love this suggestion um, and it is especially relevant to the inner west where there are a number of apartments. They were built in the 60s, 70s, 80s when bike parking simply wasn't provided. There's a fabulous initiative in the UK. I think it's Waltham Forest, 
uh, and basically um, a number of local residents can make a request for a, a bike cage to be installed in a single parking car parking space on the street and um, you know perhaps in a West Council could consider this and what I would encourage you to do as many people as possible is be placing this uh, in your say in a West, making comments in your say in a West to encourage this as an action in the strategy. It would probably come under uh, priority four, supporting people to ride a bike. And um, uh, I would encourage you to be making that suggestion on your say in a West. Again, reaching out to your councillors and to and to council staff to make this suggestion is one of the most influential things you can do. The Waltham Forest example I mentioned, if you Google it, you'll, you'll see it. They, they have these great structures that they place in a single parking space. I think they accommodate five or six bicycles. And um, it's all dependent on hearing from a number of people in a street or immediate area uh, requesting this. So one of the most influential things we could do is not just get it an, as an action in the strategy, uh, but perhaps working with neighbours, if you see other bikes in your street, approaching neighbours and, and making that, that request to council. Uh, so again, your voice through your say in a West, as well as ongoing to councillors and staff, is, is without a doubt the most influential thing we can all do. Uh, I just had a, a quick uh, Google while you were talking about that, Bridget, and there, there, there seems to be a lot about that particular scheme in Waltham Forest. So certainly uh, I'll be having a look at that too. That really sounds fascinating. And I think probably one of the most exciting things about doing work in this space is that there are amazing initiatives mm -hmm. going on around the world you must be um you must be very hopeful seeing what is ha what is happening overseas yeah, that's, just, that's just a question from me because I, uh, because uh you know i i do know that this is a space where there's there's masses of innovation there is and um, what's interesting with that point Annie is that cities worldwide are facing this challenge which is where we just need to move people around better and it's not about um, everybody riding a bike it's not about getting rid of cars it's just about a range of different ways to do things to get around uh, and there is fabulous initiatives going on, including in Australia and New Zealand, uh, as well as around the world. And we're all um, drawing on them and learning from each other. Uh, and that's what priority five in the strategy is about, which is learning, um, learning from each other, from other councils. Fabulous things are happening in other councils in New South Wales, especially in some regional areas. Uh, as well as other capital cities in Australia, in New Zealand, and in American and European cities. Um, so it's all about learning from each other. And I'd encourage you to, to take a look at some of those, uh, those ideas and consider what could potentially be, be used in the inner west. Uh, someone has put a comment in saying FYI, Lambeth Borough Council uh, in London has secure undercover bike parking on the streets. So that's something that, that we, can, uh, we can have a look at. Uh, next question from Tam. Now, now there is a state minister for active transport. Has the minister contacted the Inner West Council regarding cycling in the LGA? If not, is there is there a possibility that council will contact, contact the minister instead, or does the the majority of contact or engagement go through Transport for New South Wales? Uh, Transport for New South Wales has a, a fabulous collaborative session that meets each month. It's called a community of practice. Um, the active transport minister is still a fairly new role. 
it's certainly promising and I have no doubt we'll be hearing from them soon. Um, in the meantime though, transport for New South Wales is extremely collaborative in this space. Uh, the community of practice, which meets uh, monthly each uh, on a Thursday, has grown from under 100 people 12 months ago to three or 400 now. There is a real, um, a real commitment from Transport for New South Wales uh, towards walking and cycling and um, the uh, creation of an active transport minister is a really promising outcome. Um, and uh, I have no doubt that in a West and other councils, we'll be hearing from, from the minister before too long. Okay, we've, we seem to have um, pretty much got through all the questions and comments for this evening. I'm really thrilled at how many people have um, joined us this evening and have put uh, their thoughts and comments in our live event Q&A. So thank you so much. Uh, so we've got one last one here. Uh, if anybody does want to make a comment, we will be absolutely recording these, collating them and putting them into our uh, engagement outcome report and also taking them into account when the draft strategy and action plan is developed. Um, but yes, now is the time to to add any any further last ones that you have for this evening. So um, Sarah has got uh, two comments here. The first one is how much power does Inner West Council have to influence neighbouring councils with poor infrastructure? So we'll just uh, look at that one first. Uh, if I can be quite frank, not much. Um, one of the best things Inner West Council can do is like the City of Sydney is set a high benchmark. Um, if we provide good cycling facilities that uh, connect with our surrounding councils, that is probably the best thing we can do. Um, that is probably the most influential thing we can do. Uh, other councils like Inner West Council need to do what is right for their, their local area and their community. So whilst we can certainly express a view, um, we, we can't significantly necessarily influence them. We could, however, put a, a very high quality safe cycling link right up to the boundary. And that's without a doubt one of the most one of the most effective things we could do to to have them meet it. Yeah. Uh, and then Sarah also um, as says that she rides a cargo bike and um, riding it into a shopping mall car park or say uh, a big box store car park always feels quite risky. Uh, is there anything that can be done to make private property places safer and more friendly for cyclists? Uh, private property development is captured by the LEP, Local Environmental Plan and DCP, Development Control Plan, and both of these are in development now. Um, that's the new Inner West LEP and DCP. Uh, and I would, you know, encourage you to be reaching out, not just as part of the cycling strategy engagement now underway, keeping your eye on your say Inner West for um, public exhibitions of LEP and DCPs, as well as what are, what are called planning proposals. Planning proposals tend to refer to a specific site uh, whereby um, it, uh, a, a potential development is outlined for a specific site. And one of the best things uh, we can do is basically make sure the planning controls, the LEP and DCP, as well as the planning proposals for individual sites are clearly reflecting a high expectation for, for cycling provision on site. Um, that's, that's an extremely good point that you make there, Bridget. We are actually uh, working now to, to have um, a specific study uh, on exhibition in June of this year about car parking provision on private developments as part of the LEP uh, development. So if people are interested in that and they would like to comment 
in uh, probably the best thing to do is actually sign up to our um, newsletter on your say in a west and that as soon as that particular engagement uh, is uh, starting then you'll get an email that says have your say on this particular matter so so but at the moment we're, we're definitely working to june for that one and so right. we've got we've and got it would be great if that could consider all parking uh car parking is often readily considered with new developments uh if we could cater for all parking including bicycles and cargo bikes th this is what's important yeah absolutely so that that is something that um i think there'll be an increasing awareness of that uh and uh will be able to add value with the work that you're doing now and, and which the community is doing now to develop this cycling strategy and action plan. So um, I think we'll pretty much uh, come to the final question now, which is from Tam. Uh, Tam says, with the state election coming up in March 2023, do you think that there will be any extra funding or windfall for cycling uh, from election commitments? Um, oh, uh, your guess is as good as mine. I I really don't know. I do know that Transport for New South Wales has a um, has a comprehensive and and pretty well funded uh, active transport program. Uh, they're opening it. Um, I understand more than just annually now. Uh, but sadly, uh, election commitments and funding is, is your guess would be as good as mine there. Uh, and is that is that something that um, council has has a lobbying capacity and is that something that um, uh, the the lobbying aspect will be will be part could be considered to be part of the action plan? Uh, uh, working with the state and federal governments uh, to advocate for change is, is certainly part of it. This is independent of elections or the holder of government. Uh, working with both state and uh, federal governments is a necessary part of any cycling strategy and will, will certainly, as uh, priority five identified, uh, will certainly, certainly recognise it. OK, well, thank you so much. Thank you to everybody uh, for your thoughtful uh, comments and questions this evening. They will be collated and we will be putting them uh, in uh, our engagement outcome report. They'll, the councillors will be able to see those and we'll also be using them to keep the progress going on developing the strategy and action plan. Um, now, a quick reminder that although we will be all using all the comments that are gathered here to inform the strategy, if you complete the online survey on your say in a West or put some information on our active, uh, our interactive map, you will go into the draw to win one of 15 $150 cash cards. So that's an incentive that we have uh, for people to jump online at your say in a West. I'll, um, what we'll do is we'll put the um, the URL in the Q&A uh, and yes we, we have that incentive so that uh, we're trying to get as many people as possible to uh, engage with this particular strategy and action plan development. So uh, pretty much the last thing to to ask you Bridget is just um, if you can give us a very broad overview of the timing uh, for the next stages of development of, of these uh, of these documents. Yeah, uh, so um, I'm hoping to launch into uh, all the comments I receive. I'm hearing good numbers already, so I'm hoping to jump into that in the last part of April to prepare uh, the consultation report, which Annie has mentioned, um, and that will then be placed on your say in a West, as well as uh, be used to inform further development of the strategy. Um, I'd really like to see the draft cycling strategy reported to Council for public exhibition uh, this year, so certainly before Christmas. It may not be able to go on public exhibition right away because we like to avoid uh, school holidays. It's not, it's not reasonable to be asking people to spend their holidays 
reading through these documents. So it may that may be that it gets um, supported by council for public exhibition before the end of the year and is then placed on exhibition in 2023. Uh, this is largely the time frame I'm working to. Uh, I, uh, I'm hearing good numbers around what's come in already, so I, I, I understand I'll have a, a lot of comments to work through and um, hopefully we'll see something reported to council and it will be a public document once it's reported to council, uh, hopefully reported to council in, in the, the current calendar year. That's fantastic. OK, well, I'm just going to wrap up there uh, and just once again, thank thank you, Bridget, for all your expertise and information this evening. That was fantastic. And thank you to everybody who who attended this evening, everybody who has made a comment or put a question in and everybody who has taken the time to jump online and um, and take part in this really vital consultation for the future of of our neighborhoods. So thanks once again. Thank and you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you, Annie. Keep writing. <laughs>